The most important senses in both humans and animals are hearing, touch, smell, taste, and sight. The eye is the observer of the body. This observation organ sends images to the brain. But does the eye always tell the truth? An optical illusion is something that you see, but that is interpreted differently by the brain. If you look at the stationary wheel, we see two round shapes. But when the wheel turns, our eyes are deceived. We now see a 3D effect in which cones or funnels emerge. Vision has always fascinated us. Even in nature, we are deceived by our eyes. Mirages are interesting weather phenomena. The air actually reflects a different picture, an image that, in fact, is not there. Rainbows occur because the sunlight is bent in the raindrops and returns as a kind of prism. Here, the colors of the white sunlight are pulled apart, creating a band of color. Another common example is visible on a hot day when asphalt is heated by the sun. The hot air layer reflects the light of the clear air upwards, and you see its reflection above the ground. When this happens, it looks like there's water on the road. Sometimes, you'll see tires riding through the mirror. We are also deceived by our eyes in other ways. One method of hiding from sight is camouflage. It's there, but you don't see it. You see something different from what actually exists. Some animals have weak defenses. As a result, they've developed a clever way to hide and survive. Mother Nature helps them to blend into their environment or become a part of it. They can therefore quickly lead our human eye down the garden path. It's as if they're not there at all. Below the surface, too, we find astonishing methods that sea creatures use to survive. Hiding in the endless ocean is difficult, but the art of disappearing in a variety of colors or anywhere on the seabed is the ultimate trick to survive the extremely harsh environment of the reef. At first glance, the world around the coral reefs is a kingdom of striking patterns, beings and creatures. In reality, many of their residents use sophisticated camouflage techniques to make themselves as inconspicuous as possible. They do this to get food, but also to avoid predators catching them. Many of these survival skills are often interrelated. Because silverfish often swim in the open sea, they need proper camouflage. They use the sunlight reflected on their scales. There are tiny reflective crystals on them, making the fish almost invisible. 
When you look at a fish swimming above you, its shape can be clearly seen as the sun illuminates the surface. A fish with a narrow underside shows up less than a broader fish, such as a flatfish. That's why flatfish live on the seabed. Before they reach this stage of life, the juvenile fish live in open water, and they have an eye on either side like other fish. As they grow older, they sink to the bottom. Over time, one eye moves, so both eyes are on the same side. In order to be motionless for as long as possible, they can rotate their eyes in different directions to cover a wide field of view. They can adjust the color pattern of their skin to the background. These colors are produced by cells in the upper layer of skin. They rely entirely on their perfect camouflage. When danger threatens, they flee only at the last moment. Even though they're sometimes brightly colored, the family of scorpion fish can blend with their environment. sting from their venomous spines is painful and some species can be dangerous, even for humans. Almost all scorpion fish are extremely well camouflaged by skin appendages and an irregular spotting pattern, so they can adapt to their hunting grounds. Some species use their tails as a turning signal. They crawl towards their tail on the seabed, supported by two front and two ventral fins. Scorpion fish live solitary lives and only look for a partner during the mating season. Most are bottom dwellers that feed on fish and crustaceans. Nothing is safe from this family. They even hunt prey that are the same size as themselves. The leaf fish and wasp fish are rather peculiar. To get to their prey, they use their dorsal fin to imitate a leaf swaying in the swell. If there's no current, they actively wave their fins. Both types prefer sheltered areas with a dead bottom. Once they've chosen a territory, they never leave it. They can be found in the same spot for years. One of the characteristics of this species is their ability to shed their skin like a snake in one go and free themselves from parasites. The best hunting ground for most species is the seabed on which they move around or into which they burrow. When a snail is actively on the hunt, he regularly catches worms. By contrast, some crabs and fish, because they can't be seen, just wait patiently until their food comes along.
While juvenile fish take part in a hunting exercise, the shrimps that look like vegetation get quickly out of their way. The small eyes of a lurking wobbegong follow this scene from a distance. After this fish rapidly covers himself with the black sand, only a trained eye can find him. Even the seabed is a very suitable shelter. Small crustaceans make clever use of this. A crab uses the same escape route and scurries off. The bobtail squid disappears rapidly, using his tentacles to cover himself with grains of sand. while for other cephalopods, they're just a means to grab prey. Fish continually scour the bottom looking for food. The body of the orang-utan crab is covered with algae for his camouflage and using sand grains as a finishing touch. It feeds off passing particles which stick to the algae. You will usually find mating crabs on the bottom or near it. Their ritual begins when the water reaches the right temperature. The male performs a mating dance by waving his claws back and forth. Pheromones come from glands under his claws to which the female is sexually attracted. Mating happens when the female is in the shedding phase. Now her shell is soft enough for the coupling to take place easily. The eggs are held in a mass at the bottom of the belly until the offspring let themselves be dispersed by the current. Sea spiders are found on all ocean floors. They have a small, slim body. At their head is a trunk which they use to suck juices from sea anemones, sponges and tunicates. Not only crustaceans make use of the seabed. This nudibranch perfectly mimics its habitat. When she's not moving, she is at one with her surroundings. Fish that are the same colour as the sand also feel safe here. Nevertheless, there are predators such as spaghetti worms that prey on these animals. When they hunt, they bury themselves in order to capture prey from this position.
this fish seems too big, but in nature, nothing is wasted, because immediately the scavengers show up. Fireworms eat almost anything they encounter on their way. Some species have strong jaws and chase live prey, including small worms, crustaceans and snails. These animals are solitary and defend their habitat. When they themselves fall prey to a hungry fish and lose their head or other body part, it grows back by itself. Other worms even let bottom sand circulate in their bodies. The food is absorbed from it, after which the sand is excreted. Flatheads have an unusual body shape, and their hunting strategy is based on this. They have a wide and flat body. Both eyes are on the top of the head, which gives them an excellent field of vision to attack prey swimming above them. They use their body structure and change color to hide in the sand. Only their eyes are visible. Shrimp gobies live with blind shrimp. The shrimp make the hole for the goby in exchange for protection. When danger threatens, the fish gives a signal via its tail to the shrimp's tentacles, and together they flee into the hole. But this lizard fish is on the hunt. He regularly stretches his mouth wide open to practice before grabbing larger prey in his jaws. This time, he has a shrimp goby in his sights. The goby feels that there's danger, but does not see the predator because he's motionless, waiting for his chance. But when the goby isn't paying attention, the lizardfish strikes. He has a great deal of trouble devouring the goby. The agony lasts more than 30 minutes. Before these fish strike, the color of their heads keeps changing. The reason is still a mystery. From what we've seen in this episode, we can infer that the eye is one of the most important senses for survival in a hostile underwater world. Of course, there are other ways of disappearing in the world's oceans. In the next part of this series, we reveal how colors and mimicry play a major role in the mysterious surroundings of the great oceans. Animals will always continue to adapt in order to survive, no matter how difficult the conditions in their habitats might be. Hopefully, they also succeed in defying humans, their greatest enemy. <laughs>